السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد In a previous session we talked about certain things that will make the Muslim gain tashafa'a or the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other types and kinds of shafa'a intercession on the day of judgment defending the person before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are in need of that we are in need of someone or something that will defend us on the day of judgment last time we covered the subject of ikhlas in our shahada yani in our belief and our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the sincerity of our belief and faith will be one of the main things that will make the Prophet وسلم, intercede for us on the day of judgment. And that's why when he was asked, O Messenger of Allah, who will be the happiest person that will gain your shafa'a and your intercession on the day of judgment? He said, the happiest person that will gain my shafa'a, my intercession, my defense on the day of judgment will be the one who says, La ilaha illallah. He who says, there is no one worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says it, and he is sincere in that statement, dedicating his life and ruling his life and leading his life according to the conditions of La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. One of the things very important for us to gain the shafa'a on the day of judgment is going to be the shafa'a of the Quran. The shafa'a of the Quran. Shafa'a al Quran. The intercession of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Quran will intercede for us on the day of judgment. It will stand and defend the person on the day of judgment. But who is that going to be that person that the Quran will defend on the day of judgment. Uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his hadith, اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنَ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ اقرأوا الزهروين البقرة وسورة آل عمران فإنهما يأتيان يوم القيامة كأنهما غمامتان أو كأنهما فرقان من طير صواف تحاجان عن صاحبهما a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraging us to be always connected with the Quran reading it or memorizing it as much as we can if we can memorize that will be great if we can just read that will be great if we listen to it that will be great the main, the main thing is to be always connected with the Quran the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said read the Quran recite the Quran because it will come on the day of judgment, Shafi'a. Shafi'a will be, it will be in the form of a man that will come and defend the person on the day of judgment. And you ask, who are you? Will tell you that I am the Quran. I am your Quran that you used to recite. Be connected with the Quran on a daily basis. Even a small portion of it. Few ayahs of the Quran. That will be a big prophet. A big gain on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, recite the two surahs, Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, because they will come on the day of judgment in the form of the clouds covering the person from the heat of the sun. Or they will come as two rows of the birds flying and they are lined up and they will be defending the person before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tuhajjan. You know what tuhajj is? They will argue. Yani they will talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will like just represent to you before Allah azza wa jal. That, oh Allah, this is the one that used to recite us. Oh Allah, forgive his sins. Oh Allah, bestow your mercy upon him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the intercession of the Quran. And especially these two surahs. And we know from the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, about Surah Al Mulk, in the Quran, Surah 30 Ayah, Najat Sahibaha, Min Adab al Qabr. 
the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he said indeed in the Quran there is a surah which is 30 ayahs, 3 zero verses. This surah saves its reciter from the punishment in the grave. That's why it is recommended for the Muslim to read it every night. The Prophet وسلم, a man came to him and said, O Messenger of Allah, I was on a journey. And I rested in one place. I put my tent. And while I was sleeping in the night time, I heard a voice reciting Surah Al-Mulk. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, under the, in that place, he told him, in that place, there is a grave of a person that used to recite Surah Al-Mulk. And it defends him before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it saves him from the punishment in the grave. Surah number 67. According to the order of the Mus'haf, Surah Al-Mulk, Tabarak Al-Ladhi, Biyadihi Al-Mulk, Wa Huwa Ala Kulli Shayin Qadeer. In other hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Quran, Shafi, Mushafi, Mahil, Musaddaq. Man ja'alahu amamahu, Qadahu ila al-Jannah. Wa man ja'alahu khalfahu, Saqahu ila al-Nar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The Quran is an intercessor. The Quran is Shafi. Mushafi. Shafi is an intercessor, Wa Mushafi. Yani his, uh, its intercession is accepted. Yani it's not only Shafi'ah. You might have someone defending you, talking on your behalf, but is it guaranteed that Allah is going to accept this or not? That's the point. So he said Shafi'un Mushafi'ah. Shafi'ah will intercede. Mushafi'ah, its intercession will be accepted. It's guaranteed acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Quran, Shafi'un Mushafi'ah. Mahilun Musaddaq. Musaddiq. Yani it is a witness and confirming the righteousness and the piety of that person. Whoever makes the Quran before him, yani makes his leader the Quran, follows the Quran, follows the teachings of the Quran, it will lead him to Jannah. The hadith of the Prophet. And whoever makes or keeps the Qur'an behind him, doesn't care about it, doesn't care about its teachings and its rules and its instructions, then it will push him to the fire. According to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ جَعَلَهُ أَمَامَهُ قَادَهُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ يعني لم يبالي بأحكام القرآن وتركها The meaning of making the Quran in front of him Making the Quran his leader in actions Whenever he wants to do anything, he looks into it Is it really in accordance with the Quran And the teachings of the Quran And the teachings of Islam Okay, I'll do it If it is not, I will stay away from it So the Quran it's, is the leader But whoever leaves the Quran behind, meaning Neglecting the teachings of the Quran Who leaves it behind Will push him into the fire According to the hadith of the Prophet Alhamdulillah We're approaching the month of Ramadan And the month of the Siyam Of fasting And one of the great benefits of fasting Subhanallah The fasting, the Siyam Will be a Shafi' also in the day of judgment It will be an intercessor on the day of judgment As-Siyam wal-Qur'ani Yashfa'ani lil-Abdi yawm al-Qiyamah the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the fasting and the Qur'an will come as intercessors for the person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before Allah Azza wa Jal, on the day of judgment. The siyam will say, fasting will say, O oh Allah, I have deprived him from food and drink during the day. And the Qur'an will say, O oh Allah, I have deprived him from sleep during the night. It refers to the Actions during the month of Ramadan that we fast in the daytime and we pray in the night time and we read Quran in the, in the night time. So both of them will come as Shafi'a, as two Shufa'a, two intercessors. The Prophet said, Fayu Shafa'an. Yani, their intercession will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. ينال الشفاعة يوم القيامة هي أن يطلب الوسيلة بعد الأذان للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني after the adhan you make the dua which is asking 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the wasila, the high position in Jannah for our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he said in his hadith, man qala hina yasma'u nida, Allahumma rabba hadihi da'wa al-hiddam, wa salatu al-qa'ima ati Muhammadin wasila wa al-fadila, wa ba'athu maqaman mahmudan al-ladhi wa'atta, halat lahu shafa'at al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-qiyam. That the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith what it means. Whoever says, after listening to the adhan, O oh Allah, the Lord of this perfect call, the Lord of the salah that is going to be established, and a salat al-qa'imah, give Muhammad ﷺ al-wasila wal-fadila, these high positions in Jannah, and raise him in the praised position on the Day of Judgment, which you promised him, when you make this specific dua after the adhan, the Prophet ﷺ said, the shafa'ah of the Prophet ﷺ will be guaranteed for that person who is asking, for, uh, for all, is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the wasila for his Prophet ﷺ. So we remember these things. The ikhlas, sincerity in our faith and our belief. The Qur'an, be connected with the Qur'an. The siyam, and asking al wasila for the Prophet ﷺ after the adhan. Inshallah Ta'ala will discuss more and more about the other ways of the Shafa'ah and the different types of the Shafa'ah and we'll see how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is very merciful to us and He is very loving. He's extending His hands for us. He just wants us to get closer to Him and nearer to Him. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us these intercessions on the Day of Judgment as we ask Allah to make all of us from those who listen to the words and follow the best of them. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa astur uyubana wa sharah sudurana wa balighna min mirdika amalana Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina wa min al-amali ma tarda bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin Allahumma ashfi mardana wa arham mawtana Allahumma ashfi mardana wa arham mawtana اللهم أصلح أحوالنا وألف بين قلوبنا يا الله يا كريم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خير